Okay, the recording is on. So um, welcome one and all to uh, the hot electronic seminar series. Uh, I want to start by uh, saying that today is the Thanksgiving day in the US. Uh, so on one hand, I want to wish everyone in the US happy Thanksgiving. On the other hand, I want to apologize about this terrible scheduling conflict. It's entirely my fault. And so if you want to, um, uh, if you want to get your revenge because you didn't get to spend uh, either quality time with your family or you had to skip this talk, feel free to insult me either in person or by email or in any other way, maybe in a comment under uh, this video. Um, that leads us to another thing. We are recording this talk and so uh, with Flores' permission, we'll be posting the recording online. Um, we encourage you to ask questions during the talk. Uh, to do that, just unmute your microphone um, and ask the question. Um, just interrupt the speaker. Don't be shy. Uh, again, we benefit a lot from, from everyone's questions. And I think that is it. And so now I'm just going to introduce, uh, introduce the speaker. We're going to have a one-hour talk followed by 50 minutes of discussion. And our speaker today is Flores Gondorn of the University of Pittsburgh, who will talk about spectral sequences for homology. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so, so let me start by joining Chris in uh, wishing all Americans happy Thanksgiving. And uh, for everyone who is watching this on YouTube, a belated happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so, and thanks for inviting me, Chris and Dan, uh, to speak at Hottest. Uh, so I will be talking about um, spectral sequence in, uh, sequences in homotopy type theory. Uh, so I'll be talking about the spectral sequences for cohomology, which we've already uh, formalized in Lean, which I've talked about uh, before. And I'll uh, focus in this talk a bit more on what we still uh, need to do to get the corresponding spectral sequences for homology. Um, okay, so during my talk, I will first uh, introduce uh, spectra, free spectra, and omega spectra, uh, and define cohomology. Then I'll um, give the definition of spectral sequences, which many of you will have seen before, but just a refresher. Um, and uh, state the spectral sequences for cohomology. Uh, then I'll talk about all the ingredients we need to construct the spectral sequences for homology. There are still many parts of that which are uh, open problems and future work, um, but uh, it, it would be a really cool project uh, because the spectral sequences for homology and cohomology together have uh, many cool applications, and I'll finish my talk talking about these applications. Uh, okay, so uh, the basic definitions we're we're using are pre-spectra and omega spectra. Uh, so pre-spectra is a sequence of pointed types uh, which can be indexed over either the natural numbers or the integers. Um, uh, we choose the integers here, um, and there are uh, pointed maps uh, from the suspension of uh, the uh, pointed type at one level to the pointed type at the next level. And these are called the structure maps. Um, so you have a tower of pointed types and these structure maps. And uh, these structure maps, uh, we can equivalently um, choose them to have types from uh, the ends pointed type to the loop space of the n plus first pointed type uh, by the adjunction between the suspension and the loop space. Uh, so we can, depending on the situation, it's more convenient to define uh, a map out of the suspension or a map into the loop space. Uh, okay, so then an omega spectrum uh, is a pre-spectrum where these maps from yn to the loop space of yn plus one uh, are equivalences. Uh, so a uh, remark on my terminology. So in, in this talk, I will often uh, use the word spectrum when I mean omega spectrum, um, because that is the, the basic notion we've been using. Uh, in, in literature, it's common to call pre-spectra spectrum. Uh, spectrum. Uh, 
Uh, so that is something to watch out for. But so I'll, I'll try to say free spectrum and omega spectrum to be absolutely clear. But if I say spectrum, I mean omega spectrum. Uh, so an omega spectrum, you can think of that as sort of a space with negative dimensions. Uh, so you, we have the, the space y not, which is a normal uh, pointed space. And then the, the, the y1, y2 give uh, the negative dimensions of y. So y1 uh, is the looping of y, so that gives sort of the negative first dimension of y not, uh, and y2 is the second looping. And so uh, uh, these are sort of uh, our stable spaces. Uh, so we call spectrum, uh, so, so here, yeah, we call an omega spectrum y n truncated uh, if it's level y is truncated, but because of the uh, there's a shift in the truncation level. So yk has to be n plus k truncated uh, for all integers k. Um, and when n plus k is uh, less than negative 2 by, uh, by um, n plus k, we just truncate it, we just mean constructible. Um, and then the homotopy groups of an omega spectrum we can define them as a shifted homo a homotopy group of y k. Um, so the nth homotopy group of y is the n plus k homotopy group of y k. Uh, and for omega spectra, this is independent of k. Uh, and we can define this as long as n plus k is uh, positive or uh, non-negative. Um, and so we can uh, define this for negative n if we pick k large enough. Okay, so some examples of spectra. Um, if we have an abelian group A, we can uh, construct the eigenberg plane spectrum, H of A, um, where the, at the end level we just have the n's eigenberg plane space. Uh, this is an omega spectrum uh, by basic property of eigenberg plane space is that the loose space of the n plus first eigenberg plane space is the nth eigenberg plane space. Uh, and this is a truncated, uh, a, a zero truncated omega spectrum uh, because at level zero, well, at level n, we have an uh, n truncated type. So then uh, the second example is uh, the wedge of uh, two spectra. So if we have uh, two free spectra of two pre spectra, I mean. So if we have two piece pre spectra x and y, we can define the wedge level wise. Um, and then uh, we can define a structure map from um, uh, x and so from the wedge uh, from the wedge at level n to the loop space of the wedge at level n plus one by using the structure maps of x and y and then composing it with this map. Uh, and this map is just uh, defined by the, the universal property of the wedge. Uh, however, if X and Y are omega spectrum spectra, then this definition does not give, uh, not, not generally give an omega spectrum again, um, because the the equivalence we have here is, oh, sorry, the, the, the pointed map we have here from the wedge of the loop spaces to the loop space of the wedge uh, is not an equivalent. Uh, and then another example is if you have a pointed type X and we have a family of uh, omega spectra, which is uh, indexed by X. So if a parameterized X uh, spectrum Y over X, then we can, define uh, the dependent um, sections, so uh, the pointed uh, sections of Y, uh, which is again a spectrum. And at level N, this gives, uh, this is defined to be the pointed maps, pointed dependent maps from X into the end level of Y X. Uh, and this is a, uh, again an omega spectrum. And now uh, we can use this to define cohomology. Um, so if, if you have a pointed type X and an omega spectrum Y, uh, we can define generalized cohomology 
uh, which is often written uh, like this, uh, but I, in this talk I will use this notation, which uh, where I'm using the ordinary notation for cohomology, but just replacing the group here by a spectrum. And we define it as the negative end homotopy group of the uh, pointed maps uh, from X to Y. So this is an ex uh, the last example in the previous slide where Y does not depend on X. And if you write it out, it's just a zero truncation of pointed maps from X to YN. So if uh, Y is the Eilenberg and Klein sp uh, spectrum, we get uh, this way the ordinary reduced cohomology back with coefficients in an abelian group. Uh, and if X is any type which is not pointed, we can define the unreduced cohomology. Um, and there we just take any maps which are not necessarily pointed maps. And that's also equivalent to the cohomology of uh, X, uh, X where we add a base point, this joint from X with coefficients in Y. And in Hotley type theory, uh, we can easily define parametrized cohomology. Uh, and that is, uh, we can do that just by replacing uh, the functions from X to Y here by dependent functions uh, or sections. So the Parameterized cohomology of X with coefficients in a, a, a parameterized spectrum Y, which I will denote like this, uh, where I add X bump Y just to uh, be clear that this is a parameterized spectrum. This is the negative end homotopy group of uh, this spectrum. Okay, so that is uh, cohomology. Uh, so uh, let me uh, talk about uh, spectral sequences. So uh, spectral sequences are an, it, a sort of iteration of the long exact sequence of homotopy groups. Uh, so the long exact sequence of homotopy groups uh, says that if you have any pointed map uh, between two point types X and Y, which has fiber F, uh, then we get a long exact sequence of the home uh, between the homotopy groups of F, X, and Y in this diagram. Uh, and the maps are induced by the map F and uh, the first projection. And uh, delta is, is an other map which is defined in the construction. And so this is a, a basic construction in homotopy theory. Uh, and uh, we can think of uh, spectral sequences as sort of an iteration of that, where we have a sequence of long exact sequence of homotopy groups, and then great things will happen. So a spectral sequence consists of quite a bit more data than just a long exact sequence. Uh, so a spectral sequence consists of a family of abelian groups uh, graded by three indices. So it's graded by two integers, P and Q, uh, and an R, uh, which in this talk we'll uh, take starting at two. Um, and so for a fixed R, we get like a page, like a infinite grid of uh, abelian groups, which we call the R page of the spectral sequence. So here I have a diagram of the second page and the third page. Um, and instead of abelian groups, we could take uh, arbitrary elements of an abelian category, uh, but in this talk, I will only um, I, I will only be working with abelian groups so far. Uh, okay, so that's the first part of the data of the spectral sequence. Secondly, there are differentials. Uh, they go uh, between the groups of a single page, uh, and they have a degree. Uh, R steps to the right and R minus one steps down. Uh, so on the second page, the differentials go two steps to the right, one step down. On the first page, they go three steps to the right, two steps down. Um, this is um, how what the degrees are for the spectral sequences for cohomology. For homology, the arrows will just be flipped uh, and the arrows will go in the other direction. 
And these are differentials, meaning that the composite of two such maps is constant. And when we have uh, a chain complex like this, so every line in this diagram is chain complex. And then, of course, we want to take the uh, homology or cohomology of this chain complex. Uh, and the last part of the definition of the spectral sequence says that the uh, cohomology of the chain complex on the art page is, gives exactly the groups on the ARPIS first page. Um, so if I take the maps here in red, and I take uh, the cohomology of that, so the kernel of this map quotiented by the image of this map, then we get exactly the group in the corresponding position on the next page. Uh, so the abelian groups on the R plus first page are determined by the abelian groups on the R page. Uh, but the differentials in the R plus first page are not determined by the data of the, the R page, but they, they give new information. Okay, so when you have a spectral sequence under some uh, mild conditions, uh, these spectral sequences will converge. Uh, so for example, in this uh, uh, picture, I draw, drew only the first quadrant um, of the uh, plane. Um, and if uh, the, the groups are only non-zero in the first quadrant, that is a sufficient condition for the spectral sequence to converge and actually be pointwise eventually constant. Uh, in the uh, Serge spectral sequence uh, we construct later, we uh, don't exactly have first quadrant spectral sequences, but we have something which is roughly equivalent to a first quadrant spectral sequence. Um, so, um, yeah, so the spectral sequences will converge to this infinity page. Um, and on the infinity page, there are no maps anymore. Um, and the power of a spectral sequence is that we can often compute some properties of the infinity page. Namely, if we take the diagonals of the groups on the infinity page, we can uh, compute uh, something which is called the abutment, these Ds. Uh, and that is a sort of twisted sum of the abelian groups on the diagonals. Uh, so to, to be more precise, um, we use this notation uh, that given a spectral sequence E, that the sec uh, this E to PQ equals CPQ, and then the right arrow, uh, the abutment, D, P plus Q. Uh, so this notation means we have a spectral sequence, which has a second page. Uh, the, the second page is given by the group C. Uh, this spectral sequence converges to some infinity page, E infinity. And um, then these Ds, the abutment, is a twisted sum of the diagonals of E infinity. And what that means is that we have these uh, short exact sequences. So uh, often this is defined in terms of a filtration. Uh, but we found it uh, more convenient to work with short exact sequences. So the short exact sequences, um, we, so we say that there are some groups uh, D, N, comma, Q. Uh, and then this group D, N has a subgroup uh, E infinity and then one group on the diagonal. Um, and then the quotient uh, of the dn by this group is, is some other group. And then a subgroup of this some other group is again um, uh, one of the entries on the diagonal and the quotient is the next group. And so we continue like that. And after finitely many subgroups and quotients, uh, we get a trivial group. Um, so this is uh, the notion of convergence we used 
uh, in our formalization, uh, which was uh, good enough for the search spectral sequences for uh, cohomology. Uh, we might need to uh, generalize this notion of convergence and weaken it. Uh, for example, relax some of the finiteness condition um, here um, for when we do other spectral sequences. Um, but so this is the uh, the the meaning of this notation. So I'll pause a couple seconds if there are any questions. Okay, so uh, that is a spectral sequence, and so. Uh, the main result, the search spectral sequence uh, we constructed is the following uh, theorem. So it says, uh, given uh, any map F between two types um, and given any truncated spectrum Y, doesn't matter what the truncation level is, uh, then we have a, a spectral sequence E where the second page is given by the cohomology uh, of the codomain. So, so we think of F uh, sort of as a vibration. Uh, classically, you have to assume that this is a serif vibration. Um, and so we take the cohomology of the base space B, the codomain of F, uh, with coefficients, uh, which is the following parameterized uh, cohomology group. So these are the cohomology groups of the fiber of F uh, at a point B, which is uh, parameterized over the codomain capital B. And we take this uh, cohomology with coefficients in our truncated spectrum Y. And this converges uh, to the cohomology of the total space, the domain of F with coefficients in Y. Uh, so this is a, a quite general form of the search spectral sequence. If we plug in some special cases, so if we take as our truncated spectrum just the einberg plain spectrum, H of A, and if we assume that B has a base point B naught and it's uh, simply connected, uh, then this expression will uh, simplify. Um, so first of all, the cohomology with coefficients in Y will just become ordinary cohomology with coefficients in A. And also here we have a family of groups which uh, varies over uh, the type B. But because B is simply connected any, um, and, and the type of groups is a one type, uh, any family of groups over B is just constant. So we can just take a fixed uh, group here to choose um, as our representative for this family. Uh, and so we can take F to be the fiber of F at B naught. And so this is just the cohomology of B with coefficients in the cohomology of F. So that is the search spectral sequence. And uh, during the construction of the Serge spectral sequence, we constructed another sequence, the Atia Hirschelkrug spectral sequence. Uh, and the form, uh, oh, so uh, one remark about the Serge spectral sequence. So the Serge spectral sequence uh, only works for um, unreduced cohomology. If you replace the, um, the cohomology by reduced cohomology, uh, then this convergence doesn't work. Actually, you can still define a spectral sequence and it converges to the cohomology of some space, but it's not a very nice space. So generally that is not very useful. Can you say something about why being truncated? Um, yeah, so this, um, we had to assume this, um, uh, because 
to to, uh, to get the convergence uh, as we formulated it uh, work out. So uh, if y is truncated, then uh, we get something which is equivalent to a first quadrant spectral sequence, and that converges in the strong way we uh, defined before. If y is not truncated, we can probably, so we can still construct a spectral sequence, and that should converge uh, under using a weaker notion of convergence, maybe conditional converges to the same. Uh, groups. So when you said you've used HA, you've just truncated it at some level. Uh, yeah. So so yeah. so the definition of truncated I, I gave uh, at at my, on my first slide. So that means that uh, it's level wise truncated. So the y k's are m plus k truncated. Yes. Yeah, so just to clarify, HA is already zero truncated. You don't need to truncate it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so for ordinary cohomology, this just uh, works. There's no like a condition that y is truncated. Uh, we can prove that. Okay. So the at yeah, here's a proof spectral sequence says that if we have any type x and we have a uh, a parameterized spectrum y, uh, a parameterized omega spectrum. And this is a family of uh, truncated spectra, uh, truncated at the same level everywhere. Um, then uh, we have the following spectral sequence. So uh, the second page is the cohomology of X with, co uh, so this is the ordinary parameterized cohomology uh, with coefficients in the homotopy groups of Y. Um, uh, and and the homotopy groups of y x depending are depending on x, and this spectral sequence, uh, the abutment of this spectral sequence is this h is the cohomology of x um, with coefficients in the parameterized spectrum y. So this this is useful because it relates um, the generalized cohomology theory of y to just ordinary cohomology of x with coefficients in the homotopy groups of y. Um, and for this theorem, it would be convenient if we indeed uh, were able to relax the condition that uh, y is truncated, uh, because many of the generalized cohomology theories are not truncated. Uh, so if we want to actually apply this, uh, uh, we kind of want to get rid of this condition. And the Atia Hirsch proof spectral sequence works uh, for both unreduced cohomology and for reduced cohomology, and uh, they look exactly the same. So we just uh, can put tildes on the cohomologies, and that is also, um, then we also get a spectral sequence. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we have formalized these results. Uh, so we've formalized them in uh, Lean 2. And uh, we're currently working on applications of the spectral sequences for cohomology. Uh, so one of the applications we finished recently is the uh, GSEN sequence, uh, which I'll talk about uh, at the end of my talk. Uh, and we are still working on other applications. Um, and so there's a link here to the repository. Uh, and this is uh, joint work with um, many people from CMU. So Jeremy, Steve, Ulrich, which was at CMU, Egbert, and uh, Mike Shum, which is not at CMU. OK, so now. Uh, we want to get, uh, so so the search spectral sequence and Atia here's a proof spectral sequence, they exist for both cohomology and homology classically. So we want the corresponding spectral sequences for homology as well. And that turns out to be uh, a bit harder because homology is harder to work with in half than cohomology. 
uh, but there, uh, this has many applications. So uh, using the homology search fractal sequence, we can prove Ferreri's theorem. Uh, more precisely, we still have to prove Ferreri's theorem uh, for n equals one. So for um, for any space, saying that the uh, co uh, the homology group of a space is the abelianization of the fundamental group. Uh, but from the search spectral sequence, uh, we can get the Herrera's theorem for higher levels, um, which states that uh, for connected enough types, uh, the first non-trivial uh, homotopy group and the first non-trivial homology group are isomorphic. And the uh, Hurray's theorem for n equals one is quite a bit easier than the general Hurray's theorem, I expect, although I just heard from Dan before the talk uh, that uh, he, he, uh, he thinks he has uh, constructed or proven Hurray's theorem. So that would be interesting to, to see. Just to clarify, we have we have a sketch of a of a proof with, okay. with Lewis Coca-Cola, not a not all yes. details written down. Okay, a sketch of a proof. Um, with whom? With Lewis Coca-Cola. Okay, I think you said Lewis Coca and that confused me a bit. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so for homology, we need uh, the smash product. Uh, so given that we had a talk about the smash product uh, two weeks ago, I will very quickly go over this. So the smash product is uh, the following homotopy pushout, or this is one of the equivalent definitions. Uh, so we take the map from the wedge into the product and take the co-fiber of that and that gives the smash. So you think of that as the Partition product of A and B, where you contract down this wedge of A and B to a point. Um, and this lifts to taking the smash of a, a pointed type and a pre spectrum um, by uh, doing level wise. So we can define. Uh, this at level n would just be x match y n. And then the structure maps uh, are given by the um, property that uh, suspension commutes with smash, sort of. Uh, so the suspension of a type is just smashing with a circle. And then by associativity of smash, you get exactly the structure maps. Uh, of course, it also generalizes to taking the smash of two free spectra, but that is quite a lot harder to define. And we don't need that to just to define homology. Uh, so uh, for the smash product, we will need many properties about smash. Uh, okay, so the homology, so before I talk about that, so the homology of X with coefficients in a pre spectrum Y is defined to be the following. So, so this is again, a uh, notation you often see, I will use this homology notation. Uh, and the uh, homology uh, of X with coefficients in Y is just take the uh, smash X with Y and take the nth homotopy group. So this is the homotopy group of a pre spectrum. And though the definition of that is a bit uh, more complicated than the homotopy group of a spectrum because uh, we cannot just, the homotopy group of a spectrum is not invariant under the level we take, but we can take the co-limits of all the homotopy groups. So we take the co-limit of k as k goes to infinity of the n plus k homotopy group of uh, this level uh, at level k, and that gives us the homotopy group of x match y, which is the homology of x. Uh, so to do homology theory, we will need uh, properties. One question quickly. Oh, yes. um, the colim is a higher inductive type, isn't it? Here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Indeed, the colimit is a higher inductive type, um, which you can 
uh, write down quite easily like the test point and path constructors. Uh, and it's an, it's a special case, so you can define it, for example, using on three pushouts or what I call quotients in my dissertation. Um, yeah, so two weeks ago we heard Guillaume talk about the one coherent symmetric monoidal product structure of the smash product, and this is uh, also very useful to do a homology. And so I want to briefly in two slides talk about my approach, uh, which I've been working on together with Stefano Pigello from the University of Bergen. Um, uh, our approach to, the, to constructing this uh, symmetric monoidal product structure of the smash. Uh, and we use the adjunction between the smash product and pointed maps. Uh, so this adjunction or written out uh, more clearly, it's a natural equivalence uh, from pointed maps from the smash to C to pointed maps from A into the type of pointed maps from B to C. So uh, map, pointed maps from B to C are canonically pointed by the constant map. And then we can take pointed maps uh, from A into that. So these are binary pointed maps. So this also gives the universal property of the smash. And so St Stefano and I have formalized this adjunction and proven that it's natural in A, B, and C. And from that, we get uh, the associativity of the smash, uh, the symmetry of the smash, and this uh, property that uh, the suspension is smashing with the circle, and uh, that the suspension of the smash is smashing with a suspension on one side. Uh, and these are all pointed natural equivalences. However, we, ha uh, we still have problems with the coherence diagram, the pentagon and the hexagon. Um, and the reason for that is that we need something more than just this adjunction. Um, so, there's a book by Eilenberg and Kelly uh, called Closed Categories. Uh, and in uh, one category theory, they show that um, uh, for to get uh, a monoidal one category, uh, you need not just that this adjunction, but you need it actually an enriched adjunction or a pointed adjunction. Um, and then in their book, they uh, construct the monoidal, uh, a monoidal categories. They, they don't construct a symmetric monoidal category. Um, but they at least uh, uh, fill the pentagon. So we, need, we still need to prove that this uh, adjunction is enriched. But so the enrichedness means the following. Um, so first of all, the naturality of the junction is the following uh, commuting square of pointed maps. So a pointed homotopy between this composite, which is the, uh, the equivalence followed by uh, just the functorial action of pointed maps and functorial action of the smash by the equivalence. So that, that is the naturality, a point of homotopy between those two composites. And uh, we call an adjunction enriched or pointed, where this proof of naturality itself is pointed in H. So what that means is that if H is the constant map from C to C prime, uh, then the resulting proof of naturality we get for the adjunction is equal to the following proof of uh, naturality for where h is zero. Because in that case, we can fill the outer square by saying that, well, composing with the constant map is the constant map. Then here again, composing with the constant map is the con constant map. So both composites are equal to the constant map. Um, and therefore, we can fill this square. 
So for the when h is the constant lab, we have two fillers of this naturality square, namely the naturality we provided and this like trivial filler. And we need to show that those two fillers are equal. And, and that is exactly the statement of the adjunction to be enriched. And that is still open. Uh, but if we have that, we get uh, the pentagon and we mostly get the hexagon so far. Um, so, so that is our approach to um, the symmetric monoidal structure of the smash. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that as an aside. Okay, um, so another thing which is more problematic with homology than with cohomology is that uh, if we take uh, the smash of a pointed type and an omega spectrum y, this is not generally an omega spectrum anymore. Uh, if we just define this by smashing level wise. Uh, this is in contrast to pointed maps from x to y, which uh, which is an omega spectrum, it y is an omega spectrum. Um, so to do to get uh, nice properties for homology, the uh, spectral sequences, we want to use a spectrification. So the spectrification is uh, a left adjoint to the forgetful map from uh, omega spectrum to p spectra, and it. Uh, so it sort of builds the free omega spectrum out of a free spectrum. And it can uh, be defined in two different ways. So Max Schulman has given a definition uh, as a family of recursive higher inductive types directly. And uh, we can also define it as the following code limits. So the uh, spectra the end level of the spectrification is the co-limit of the loop spaces of y and plus k, where y is any free spectrum. Uh, so, but for neither definition of the spectrification, I think anyone has carefully shown uh, the adjunction between the forgetful map and the spectrification. So there, there have been uh, people working on it. So during the MRC um, uh, mathematical research communities uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, one group worked on uh, on homology theory, and, and we also worked on the uh, on, on trying to uh, to prove that this definition of the spectrification has uh, the correct properties, but actually showing that is is uh, an adjunction between free spectra and omega spectra. We didn't completely finish that uh, because there's a lot of higher path algebra involved, which gets complicated. I don't think anyone's written down uh, the higher inductive type definition in a proof assistant you have there. Um, I don't know. I, uh... I, uh, it's, I mean, uh, uh, until recently, I don't know if there's any proof assistant which already like supports families of recursive higher inductive types natively. Maybe one of the newer cubicle proof systems does, but uh, I don't know that. Okay, so. Uh, for cohomology, for the spectral sequences for cohomology, we needed uh, parameterized cohomology, and so we also need a parameterized version of homology, and for that we need a parameterized version of the smash product. Um, and uh, what I mean by that is the following: so uh, I use this funny notation. Uh, it, it sort of uh, is similar to the notation which is in ACTA is used for dependent maps. So it's, uh, so given a pointer type A and a family of pointer types B over A, what I mean by this is the following homotopy push out. So we take the total space of B 
And then we have a wedge formed by A over the base point and the B of A naught. Oh, sorry, the yeah, the uh, B of A naught over the base point and the family, the section given by the base points of B. Um, and we we contract that uh, this wedge down to a point. Uh, and this is sort of a parameterized version of the smash. So one thing which is important here, uh, this should not be confused with an iterated smash. Uh, so I'm not taking like a smash uh, for every, for all fibers of B, but I'm, I'm taking a single smash, but it's sort of dependent. Um, and this parameterized smash has the following universal property, namely mapping out of the parameterized smash into a point type is uh, naturally equivalent to pointed dependent maps from A into the pointed type of um, maps from Bx to C. Um, so this uh, I formalized in Lean. And uh, therefore, in particular, the, we can use the same argument as for the ordinary smash to show that I think I shared. Yes, OK, we're back. Sorry for that. Uh, yes, I was here. Well, I hope you can cut this intermission out of the YouTube video and apologize for this break. Uh, OK, so where was I? Yeah, so we have this universal property of the parameterized smash. And from that, we can prove that uh, the parameterized smash commutes with the suspension. And that means we can also define the parameterized smash with, uh, for a type and a, a, a pre-spectrum. So the, sorry, this would be pre-spectrum. Um, and then we can define the parameterized homology as the homotopy groups of this parameterized smash of a type in a pre-spectrum. Um, OK, so we have the following result, which uh, we used to construct the spectral sequences for cohomology, which we can reuse to construct the spectral sequences for homology. And this theorem is a sort of a stable analog of the busfield gun spectral sequence. It says that if we have a sequence of spectra indexed over the integers, um, uh, and uh, these maps has fiber F, um, and then under uh, two conditions, namely for uh, for every n individually, if s is small enough, the homotopy groups of the as are trivial, and if s is large enough, then the the maps f induce an isomorphism on the n homotopy group. Under those two conditions, uh, we get a spectral sequence uh, with a second page the homotopy group of the fibers, and it converges to the homotopy group of the a large enough space. And um, here I write A infinity, what I just mean is uh, AS for S uh, large enough, because those are all isomorphic by the second Boolean point. Um, and we use this to uh, construct the atia hirsch spectral sequence. Uh, namely, for the atia hirsch spectral sequence, uh, we have a parameterized spectrum Y. And we take as our sequence of spectra the uh, pointed sections of X into the uh, Posnikov tower of Y, so the S truncation of Y. And then we can verify these two conditions uh, for that case. So for homology, we would like to replace uh, these dependent maps by the parameterized smash. Um, I am not sure if we can then actually prove these two conditions. So maybe we will also need a more general notion of convergence 
uh, to get the spectral sequences for homology uh, so that we can remove one of those conditions. Because I don't think either of those conditions is uh, like uh, necessary to um, to get the spectral uh, get this spectral sequence, but uh, for our restricted notion notion of convergence, we need to assume this. Uh, so what we our plan of attack is for the spectral sequences for homology is given a point of type. So for the ATI here's a brick spectral sequence. So given a point of type X and a family parameterized pre spectrum over it, we can form the Posnikov tower of uh, Y for fixed X. Uh, then we can smash in, at each stage, uh, take the parameterized smash of X with that. And then we can take the spectrification. And uh, now we need to compute the fibers of this map. Um, and to compute the fibers of this map, we need to sh uh, prove that the smashing, this parameterized smash, preserves fiber sequences. Uh, because the fiber of the uh, Posnikov tower is just the island American plane spaces. And uh, we need, if we can show that uh, the parameterized smash respects uh, fiber sequences, then uh, we get the Atia Hirschberg spectral sequence for homology. Um, and the, the following plan of attack should work. Um, so for spectra, we have uh, the nice um, property that uh, we have a weak equivalence between the wedge of two spectra and the product of two spectra. Uh, and this follows by wedge connectivity, uh, which says that for pointed types, if X and Y are both connected enough, then this map is very connected. And we can, uh, so level-wise, uh, these maps uh, will then be infinity connected. So classically, from this, you, you can conclude by Whitehead's theorem that these two um, spectra are actually isomorphic. Um, but uh, we don't have, uh, and so if they are isomorphic, then fiber sequences and cofiber co sequences uh, are the same in uh, the category of spectra. Uh, and because smashing should, preserve co-fiber sequences, it therefore also preserves fiber sequences. So we don't have Whitehead's theorem in home type theory, um, but we only need to compute the homotopy groups of the fiber. Um, we don't need to compute the whole fiber. So we expect that we can still, we can avoid the use of Whitehead's theorem and just prove that the, the homotopy groups of the fiber of this uh, map is correct. And that still gives us the uh, spectral sequences for homology, the Atia Hirschebrug and the Ser spectral sequences. Uh, but so there's still some work there in showing actually that the parameter price smash respects co-fiber sequences and that um, therefore the homotopy groups of the fibers of the parameterized smash is the parameterized smash of the fibers. Um, yeah, so I already mentioned we might need uh, the, a weaker notion of convergence to get the search spectral sequence for homology. But if we overcome all these challenges I just mentioned, then uh, we get the following uh, spectral sequences, and these are the, the analogs of the Atia Hirschebrug spectral sequence and the Serre spectral sequence for homology. Um, and they are the same except replacing uh, cohomology by homology. Uh, and there's some indexing difference in the Atia Hirschebrug spectral sequence. Um, so I've talked a lot about uh, spectral sequence in the abstract and uh, spectral sequences have, have many applications. So I already mentioned uh, that we 
formalize the JSON sequence uh, in Lean. So the JSON sequence is the is the following long exact sequence. It says that given any pointed map, uh, or or well, you think of it as a vibration with uh, which as fibers uh, sphere. Um, and if B is simply connected, then we get the following long exact sequence uh, of cohomology groups. So this is the cohomology of the total space into the shifted cohomology of the base space into the cohomology of the base space, and then it iterates. Um, and this uh, JSON sequence is useful for um, various applications. So Guillaume used it to uh, compute the PyFarb S3. And so we've uh, given a different construction here and we've actually formalized it. And another uh, long section. Is this the same one as Guillaume's construction? No, so it's a different construction. No, but does it coincide? Uh, we haven't proven that like the maps are equal, um, but like it's the same, like the, the groups are the same and the, the, the maps should be equal, but uh, that's probably quite hard to prove because the constructions of the maps are quite involved. Uh, another long stack sequence we get is the Wang sequence. So this is um, if you have a vibration where the base space itself is a sphere and uh, well, a simply connected sphere, so at least the two sphere. And then we get also a long stack sequence of cohomology groups um, where we have the cohomology of the fiber, uh, a shift of cohomology of the fiber, and then a cohomology of the base space. And uh, these long stack sequences are both useful. Uh, for example, if i is small enough, then this i minus n might be negative, or for some other reason, this uh, cohomology group might be trivial, and therefore you get an equivalence between these two uh, cohomology. So this allows you to actually compute cohomologies, both of these long sex sequences. Uh, and both of them have analogs for homology, which we should be able to construct from the spectral sequences uh, for homology. Um, so this uh, uh, is the construction of the JSON sequence, which will I will quickly go through. Um, so um, given this uh, map from E to B with fiber as n minus one, the second page of the spectral sequence uh, is this form, where here we have the, co the ordinary uh, unreduced cohomology of the sphere, which we just can compute. So this is the in uh, this just a for q equal to zero and n minus one and zero otherwise. Um, and therefore our second page just has two rows of non-trivial groups and the, everything else is trivial. And therefore all the differentials on almost all pages are trivial except where the differential has exactly the right degree, uh, which is at the end page, where uh, we have a map at the end page from uh, from the top row to the bottom row. And so that's where the, the groups change. So then we get actually uh, on the next page, we get the kernel of the maps on the top row and the co-kernel of the maps at the bottom row, where I've um, omitted some of the indices of the DN. So these are not the same groups. Uh, and then it again stabilizes because the differentials are trivial again from then on. Uh, and so then the infinity page looks like this. And so by the abutment of the spectral sequence, 
we know that uh, the abutment, which is a cohomology group, uh, is built up from just two groups on this inf uh, infinity page. And that gives you exactly this short exact sequence. So this is the abutment, the cohomology of the total space. And we have a short exact sequence from the co-kernel of the piece into the, um, the, co the, the cohomology of the total space into the kernel of the piece. Um, and whenever we have short exact sequences like that, we can combine them into one big long exact sequence. So we have the short exact sequence here vertically, and then horizontally is just the, the map D with its kernel and co-kernel. And then we can diagonally move through this diagram. And that gives us exactly the G sin sequence. Uh, so that's an example of how you can use spectral sequences to get uh, the G sin sequence. And when actually formalizing all this reasoning that's quite involved. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it's on, on paper, it sort of straightforwardly follows from the uh, search spectral sequence. So future applications uh, we can do once uh, we have the spectral sequences for homology is um, uh, one thing I already mentioned is Herrerich theorem. Uh, so we, uh, it would be really interesting to investigate Serre class theorem in homotopy type theory. So the Serre class theorem says that if we have a family of abelian groups, uh, which is closed under some operations, uh, uh, and that is called a Serre class, uh, then um, the homotopy groups are in this Serre class, if and only if the homology groups are in this Serre class. And there are some challenges in actually uh, doing this in homotopy type theory. So the first one is that this, the proof of this uses the universal coefficient theorem. And um, for the universal coefficient theorem, we need uh, like left uh, derived uh, functors. Um, and the theory of that might essentially require the axiom of choice. So that might be tricky to reproduce in homotopy type theory, uh, but also interesting because maybe things work differently. And the second problem is that constructively, the collection of finite abelian groups and the collection of finitely generated abelian groups, those are classically both ser cl classes, but uh, constructively, uh, they might not be because they're in particularly not close on their subgroups. Um, so actually applying the Sarklas theorem, for example, to show that all the homotopy groups of all the spheres are finitely generated is tricky because, uh, well, the finitely generated abelian groups might not form a or well, do not form a Sarklas constructively. Uh, other applications is uh, trying to compute the homology and cohomology groups of generalized cohomology theories, like K theory. Uh, this is unfortunately not a truncated spectrum, so we would need to generalize the atr hirschebruch spectral sequence. And uh, eventually, we want to compute more homotopy groups of spheres. Thank you. That was my presentation. Right, thank you very much. I'll now unmute everyone's microphone so that we can all applaud. All right. <laughs> and I'll move on to muting everyone's microphone. Um, all right, I think everyone's muted now, uh, other than me. And we're going to open the floor for discussion and questions for the speaker. So just let me your mic and ask the question. So as I understand it, a lot of the uh, work with spectral sequences is just the bookkeeping, uh, which is slightly easier on paper, I suppose. But do you, have you written any programs or anything in Lean, for example, to kind of do the work for you? Uh, not yet. That's, that, might be, that might be really useful indeed to, to keep the book 
keeping of like equivalences of the uh, spectral, uh, like of the different pages of the spectral sequence because all the differentials are non trivial. And there, um, that, that would be a nice project to do later, but I think first it's useful to have a couple of examples like worked out explicitly and then use that as the basis of like automation and like then you know which direction you want the automation to go to. So I think so, so far we've only done it manually, but that might still give us the ideas on how to try to automate this bookkeeping. Another question, uh, unrelated. Um, which spectra have been constructed in hot? Because as far as I understand, there's not many of them. We haven't done, for example, any other generalized cohomology. Uh, no, that is correct. So the the basic constructions of spectra, uh, which I, uh, which we've constructed, is the suspension spectrum for an arbitrary pointed type and the eilenberg maclean spectra. Um, and then there are various operations on spectra. Um, so uh, we have thought. Uh, or various people have thought about constructing, for example, the K theory spectrum in HOT. Um, and uh, we, uh, so, so some people have written down a definition which should work in HOT, but actually writing that down carefully uh, will be tricky. Um, and also, um, I think that will probably require like smashing two spectra, and smashing two spectra is is a quite hairy subject even classically, uh, and there there would be useful to work with symmetric spectra. Uh, but symmetric spectra, uh, which also have been investigated by various people, like they they are hard to to define coherently and nicely in hot and to work with them is hard. All right, any other questions? I'll ask a I... question for us. Um, so we're talking about the wedge of spectra versus the product um, and mentioned how the map from the wedge to the product is infinitely connected. Um, do you have a sense of, for whether in hot that map will be an equivalence? Like, w you know, without assuming any extra principles. Yeah, so that that is an uh, I I haven't researched that um, that question myself, but I I've asked around to uh, well classical algebraic topologists and um, what I've heard is that the only proof they know that like does depend on uh, white hat's theorem like gets the weak equivalence and from that construct the equivalent gets the equivalent so yeah it seems okay. it seems very possible that it, it's not an actual equivalent. Yeah, I, I, you might you might be right. On the other hand, there are facts in classical topology that are always proved using Whitehead's theorem, where you don't need to. You know, like some of the things that we did about localization, we couldn't use any of the classical proofs, but it turns out they were still true. Um, so sometimes there there are things that weren't seen before because there was no need to find a more geometrical proof. So I, I think it could go either way, and I don't have a good sense. It's, it's an interesting question. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it would definitely be interesting to figure that out. Uh, I, I also don't have a good sense of it. Uh, sorry, I was just going to follow up on that. Yeah, can you, it. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. So I was just going to say that I, I, I think from, a, from the perspective, at least, of higher category theory, we kind of would expect it to be true, right? Because I, I mean, I think a spectra in sort of any infinity category do form a stable category under the right definition. And then that's a consequence of them being stable. So I, I don't, 
don't know if I can. I don't know if I can think of a reason for that to be sort of false internally, when there is a sort of very, very general external proof that I don't think relies on homotopy groups. So, right. so I mean, we should look at the external proof. Yeah. So quasi categories or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I had the exact same question. So, uh, but yeah, and it, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the input. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So maybe I'll ask a question in the spirit of dance questions. Can you go one slide back? Okay. And yeah, so I'm wondering what you're feeling about um, the universal coefficient theorem. <laughs> uh, that's again a tricky question. Uh, so I, I don't really think that like special cases of the universal coefficient theorem should just be provable in the hub. Um, and yeah, maybe we can prove like a just a special case of the universal coefficient theorem where which is sufficient to to get the this statement of the circular theorem. Maybe from uh, trivial group to trivial group. Well, no, but like uh, I. Um, like where some of the, the complications with the Tor functor, for example, are, can be omitted. Um, like maybe where the Tor functor is trivial or something. Um, but essentially what you're doing here is try, you're trying to avoid the axiom of choice. So I was wondering if you have, What, what's another statement that uh, in hot you can somehow prove that would classically use the axiom of choice? Well, I, I didn't make uh, a, a strong claim about the universal coefficient theorem other than it would be interesting to investigate it in home tree type theory. Oh, I, I uh, definitely didn't mean to suggest that you made okay. it. Okay, okay. So, uh, but so, so um, I, I, I mean, it would be interesting to, to investigate like how much the universal coefficient theorem actually depends on the axiom of choice. And, and I don't know. I don't have a good sense of that. Yeah. Okay. Is the problem because classically you have to, was it show enough projectors in the abelian category or something? Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's uh, showing that there are enough uh, projectives. And but I mean, like, we might be able to get around that because I don't know if we can. But. Yeah, I don't know. And and if you have like uh, injective resolutions, uh, that those those are unique. Uh, that is often proven using the axiom of choice. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't know if th that is like a necessary. Uh, yeah, if all if the use of axiom of choice there is necessary. The one guess just off the top of my head is that um, you usually talk about something being projective when you map into the target of a surjection it lifts, but you can talk about things being projective relative to some choice of what you mean by surjection. And it could be that what you need to do is for abelian groups, um, call a map surjective if as a set map it splits. Okay. So non, it has a non-additive splitting. Then the integers would be projective for that kind of surjection. Uh, and, and maybe that's what you could use. I mean, there's the notion of a projective class where you get to choose both the projectives and the epimorphisms and they have to play with each other properly and then you can do homological algebra. So there could be some variation like that. Just, just a guess off the top of my head. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, maybe something like that could be used to avoid using the axiom of choice. All right, any other questions? I'll ask something on a different topic. So back when you were talking about the smash product and um, your proof of associativity and symmetry and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, you said the one gap is this pointedness condition for the naturality. 
Um, so, I mean, first my comment is, wow, that's just something about the constant map is the thing that you're stuck on. It seems uh, really surprising. Um, so I, I guess I'm wondering, when you get to that point in the proof assistant, do you get some massive term that's just impossible to understand or what, what stops you at that point? Well, um, yeah, it, it is indeed just a statement about a constant map, but it's um, like it, it, it is a equality between two pointed homotopies and both of those pointed homotopies are but are like the codomain is again a binary pointed map so like the the path algebra goes like four or five levels up cool. uh, and indeed just the, the proofs like the, the proof terms get in, get incredibly complicated and um yeah, there's, uh, I, I think we have like a specific hypercube. We need to fill uh, like a four dimensional cube, uh, which should be the main part of this proof. Um, but like filling that is, is hard in the, in, in the proof assistance. Uh, on paper, it looks sort of like that. Like if on paper we pretend like we're working in a cubicle type theory, then uh, then the proof looks a lot simpler. Like like the cube looks a lot simpler. But uh, and, and so therefore we also try to to uh, fill this cube in a cubicle proof assistant. Uh, but there also the proof terms get massive. And, uh, yeah, that's it, okay. It, 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 it's yeah, it's combinatorially like a big problem. Yeah. And are you are you still hoping to be able to do it, or you, you've given up for now? Uh, so I I, I am st there's still an approach we've uh, we have we, which I want to investigate further, um, where we define actually this equivalence differently. Uh, as um, so, currently we are defining this equivalence by explicitly constructing the unit and the co-unit of the adjunction and going from there. But we can also define this equivalence by writing out what both of those definitions mean as like in terms of iterated sigma types, just what are the components and rewriting them. And it, that might be more amenable to like the enriched naturality, because we might be able to show that each of the individual equivalences is, is enriched natural, and therefore the composite is, and each of the individual equivalences is, is hopefully a lot simpler than this equivalence. Okay, thanks. All right, any, any further questions? Maybe people are watching the game right now. <laughs> uh, do you have any prediction for us, Caruana or Carlson? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, I'll wait a second for final questions, if there are any. And if there are none, then I'll unmute everyone and we're gonna thank Flores uh, again. <laughs> And everyone is now back to be mute, being muted, but that doesn't really matter because we're about to finish uh, the meeting. I'm just going to say in two weeks we're going to have Eric Finster and that will be the last uh, meeting of 2018. It's been our first year and we're going to resume after that in January. 2019. Um, so yeah, tune in in two weeks to learn more from Eric. Thank you.